Welcome to today's devotion. Um, we are in Luke chapter 10, and um, the first 12 verses are this commission that Jesus gives to 72 of his followers. So let's pray and we'll get into it. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together once again. And as we go into your word, may your word shed light on the reality of your kingdom, your character, your nature, your hope, your truth. And may it change how we think at our core. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others. Um, others say 70, but okay, either or, 70, 72 others. And he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. So it's very similar to uh, John the Baptist in, pre in preparing people to receive the Lord. Um, in this, in this, this is Jesus' last um, journey to Jerusalem before he's killed. So this is it. This is his last march, if you will. And it's a spiritual march. A lot of times, especially in our culture, we have lost sight of this. There is a cosmic spiritual battle that has been going on in the heavenly realms before the world was created so that when the world was created, it was sucked into that conflict and it was sucked into that conflict in Genesis chapter three, where one of the beings taking the form of a serpent brought humanity into A, rebellion and B, separation. And that they didn't stop there. It got so bad that humankind devolved to the extent where they could only think evil thoughts all the time. And that's Genesis chapter 6. And then God starts over and then they build a tower still in rebellion. And that's Genesis 11. So it's been going on for a long time. But God will not give up on his, his intention with this world, which is to have a world in which his image bearers live with him. He also lives here and reigns here, and we co-reign with him intimately. There is no death. There is no sadness. There is no pain. There is no suffering. There is no injustice. There is no deceit. There is no everything that marks this world. That is gone, and the new has come. And that is the eternal conflict. Every generation is born into it. As I said in a, a gener, um, devotion or two ago, that Jesus chose to come into this world. We find ourselves here. We have to figure out why we're here. And fortunately, and by God's mercy and grace and love and kindness, he does not leave us on our own. But he reveals himself primarily through his son and through his word and through the Holy Spirit that draws us to him. That being said, he has, God, been marching forward to undo all of the damage and destruction and evil consequences that have come by the heavenly, re heavenly rebellion that took place before the world began. Leader of that we know is Satan or the devil. And this is a struggle. We don't think about it in, in, in our culture because we have been taught for, well, decades now that we're just getting better and better and better and better. And the world is just going to get better and better and better and better. And the technology is going to get better and better and better. And finally, we'll live in this utopia. And the reality is we're not going to. We may have more advanced technology, but human nature does not change. The technology that we're given may increase the pleasure of our life may increase some of the pleasantries of life, but oftentimes it's used in very evil, destructive, and painful ways. So, yeah, we're in a spiritual struggle. And the church, being the body of Christ, is involved in that struggle. 
there are two kingdoms fighting each other, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, and we belong in the one and not the other. So when we get to chapter 10 and we read this, he's, pointing, he's appointing 72 others to go ahead of him in pairs where he is about to go, and they are engaging in this offensive because that's exactly what it is. It's a spiritual offensive. That brings us into verse 2. He told them, the harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. So he's saying, there is a number of people that are out there ready ready to hear this message, ready to be captivated by the spiritual truth of the message and to be called by God, by his spirit, to follow him, to believe in him, to trust him, to belong to his kingdom, to learn from him and to go forward in his name and by his power to advance the kingdom. There are a lot of people dormant, ready to hear that. Pray to God for others to come in and help with that process. And a lot of times this is thwarted because of personal ambition by spiritual leaders. We tend to think of it, myself included, as a competition, not as a commission. But the truth is, it's a commission. And for every church that may be different than what you're doing, whatever, as long as they are pursuing the true gospel message, and are being led by the Spirit, there is unity. Now he goes on to say then in verse 3, Now go, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Meaning that you are extremely vulnerable. Extremely vulnerable. And the wolves will be out to do what they can to destroy you. It's very powerful teaching because it builds on the Jewish understanding of God as the good shepherd. And probably the most well-known psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Where David himself compares himself to a lamb, Whatever it is that is being shepherded at the time, a sheep, Jesus considers a sheep, etc., in his teaching. But sheep are very vulnerable. They don't run very fast. They don't have any kind of defensive physical traits. They can't bite to protect themselves. They don't have fangs. They don't have claws. They are completely vulnerable. And the only way that they have protection is to be able to hear the shepherd's voice. That's it. And if the shepherd is doing his job or their job, many times shepherds worked in groups, as we see here, go in groups of two. As long as they can hear the shepherd and, 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 can distinguish his voice among all the other noise out there, they are under his protection. But once they cannot hear his voice, once they ignore his voice, they are completely vulnerable. And the reality is they can be ignorant of their vulnerability, thinking that things are going along just fine. So this is important as Jesus, remember talking about the cosmic struggle. We are entering into a battle we cannot win on our own. The devil is smarter than you. He's been a long, he's been around, I should say, a lot longer than you. He knows human nature better than you. He is smarter than us in terms of what we think we need and so forth. He's, he can spot our weaknesses a mile away. But thank goodness we don't have to rely on our own abilities in this struggle. But there is one who is greater than the world that dwells within us. He who is within us is greater than he is in the world. And as long as we can hear his voice, we are protected from anything that can harm us. 
Jesus goes on to say, after saying, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves, don't carry a money bag, traveling bag, or sandals. Don't greet anyone along the road. In this way, he's saying, do not, do not carry a money bag so that you learn to rely and trust in your resources that you have on you over and above me. Because you're going into enemy territory, it is important that you remain completely focused on me, completely uh, aware and listening and seeking my voice in the kingdom of God and not to think, well, I've got this. Now, that doesn't mean you're not aware if you have resources, but in this case, he's being very clear. Don't take a money bag with you so that it forces you to rely completely and solely on me. Because that, and only that, is where we have supernatural strength. Supernatural strength comes only through faith. And you see this happen with regards to the Apostle Paul. Paul is given a wound, if you will, a physical ailment. We don't know what it is. But it is serious. And Paul prays to God to deliver him from this physical ailment, whatever it is. God's response to Paul was, no. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so there are times in which God will bring us to places and points in our life where we feel very, very weak to demonstrate that even though we feel weak, his strength is being made perfect and we can completely trust in his promises, in his presence, in his grace or his strength working on our behalf. We can trust that. And the more we grow in that trust and confidence and assurance the more we experience the fruit of that, which is peace. And the peace then gives us more awareness of our surrounding and his presence, which gives us more of an assurance of his grace, which gives us more peace, and it just snowballs and grows and grows and grows. And that's what it means, Christian, biblically, to grow spiritually. It's really maturing, if you will. And so he gives this instruction, don't carry a money bag in order to increase that faith or a traveling bag or sandals. It's all part of the same preparation in terms of not relying on your own resources. Don't greet anyone along the road, meaning do not get distracted. It doesn't mean don't be rude. It doesn't mean don't greet anyone by saying hi. It means do not get distracted with your mission. You might like people, you might like to talk, great, but that you're on a mission. Don't get distracted. That then brings him to verse five, whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house, which is what he's saying in this context is when you get there, peace to this house. You're bringing peace to the house. That doesn't mean (laughs) that the person living in that house is a person of peace. It means you are bringing peace. You are not bringing agitation. You are not bringing conflict. You are bringing peace. However, verse six, if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on them because you are offering that peace. But if not, it will return to you. So you'll know your peace will return to you. You'll still have peace, but it will return to you. And then you are to remain in that same house, eating and drinking whatever they offer for the worker is worthy of the, his wages. Don't move from house to house. It takes up too much time. Once God leads you to a place where you can settle down for that moment, stay there. He's not going to have you moving from house to house. It creates too much turmoil. Well, we're going to continue on with this next time. But just bear in mind as we go through this, the, 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 the sending of the 72 is indeed a spiritual offensive. Um, May the peace of God be with you always as we go through our own struggles and our own victories in him. And may you experience his peace in the midst of that. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.